I really liked what I saw. Uh, you know, what, what I saw to Bradford was a guy who, who seemed to command the, uh, the team and, and had control over his offenses and went down the field and methodically, you know, eventually scored a touchdown. I, I liked what I saw out of the guy. You know, the first passing this, I mean, he had Riley Cooper. He had him. And, and he'll be the first one to admit that. And, you know, it's just first pass he's thrown in over two years. I mean, that ball had a, had some extra giddy up on it. And I'm sure it's a little bit of the nerves and a little bit of things like that to help that ball kind of sail. He'll complete that pass in the regular season. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, and beyond that, I mean, look, you're going to see a lot of things out of him. His accuracy has been really impressive in uh, in camp, and, I, and I'm, I'm confident that will carry over into the game. Um, you wanted him to get hit. He wanted to get hit. I wanted him to get hit. Don't think I wanted him to get hit like Suggs hit him, but the fact that he got up and shook it off and went downfield and still finished off a drive with a touchdown, that says a lot to me about the guy. And I can tell you he gained a lot of respect even more from his teammates in the locker room after that, talking about the way he got hit. Because then he did again, took a shot in the mouth. And, I mean, he got up from that a little slow, but he got up from it as well. So, look, you want him to get some hits? I want him to get some hits. You got some hits? Let's move on. And I think we can all look forward and say, hey, you know, he shook off one of the biggest tests he's going to face, which is just that first hit got up from it. So, you know, all in all, I, again, I really liked what I saw out of Brad. You gave him an A. You also gave uh, quite a few members of the secondary A grades as well. What did you see from the secondary? What impressed you? You know, what really impresses me is just thinking back to what we were looking at a year ago for 16 games and throughout the preseason. We didn't see, you know, really, a, and, I, and I don't want to use this term yet, but for lack of a better phrase, you know, any kind of shutdown threat outside. And, and, I, and I don't want to go there, like I said, yet, but what we're seeing is really good coverage downfield. It's not there. The quarterback's having to force some of these throws, and that's what Flacco did. And, you know, to the defense's credit, they took full advantage of it. Nolan Carroll, great coverage on the ball that was tipped that Thurman had. Um, and then you look at what what, um, uh, what Maxwell did as well. I mean, they're reading these, these plays very well. And I talked to Brandon Graham afterwards, and the thing that says a lot to me is, is can, the, can the front, the guys getting the rush, can they feel that that coverage is good behind them? And he said, yeah, based on what the quarterbacks are doing, you can see that they're trying to make throws that they're not exactly confident in making. And that's not what they had to face a year ago. They had to hurry up to get back there because coverage wasn't going to last more than a couple seconds. So I really like what I'm seeing out of those defensive backs. They all got good grades for me, and particularly the the, uh, the starters and the, and the first-string team. So uh, certainly a lot of reason to be optimistic there. Scott Grayson's with us. Grayson's grades are posted at 97.3 ESPN. Dot com. I want to get your thoughts, too, on the rookie Nelson Aguilar, first-round pick. You know, always people have their eyes on him. But, uh, you know, what were your expectations, and uh, what are you seeing from him? My expectations were just if, if, if he could go along the trajectory that Jordan Matthews kind of set last year. Now, Matthews was a second-round pick. Aguilar was a first-round pick. You'd almost like to say, hey, let's try to beat that mark. But, I mean, Matthews did some excellent things for a rookie. There's no doubt about it. And if, if Aguilar can go on that plane, this team's going to be just fine. And what he did in the first uh, the first game, followed it up with a, a solid performance in the second game. Do I want him to make that catch on the sideline that uh, in a regular season I would have liked to have beat Chip Kelly Challenge? Yeah. And, you know, and, and I think he'll be the first one to say he's got to catch that ball too. It, it came out when he hit the ground. But, uh, I mean, I really like what he's doing to get open. You hear from all the defensive backs that he faces. Uh, that, that they're impressed with his ability to to run great routes, to get some separation, and that's more of what I'm looking for as we get into the regular season and perhaps through the first month into the second month of the season. That's when Jordan Matthews really started to come into his own, and, I, and that's what I'm kind of looking for out of Agbor. All right, Matt Barkley against Tim Tebow. Tebow, you know, he played okay. <laughs> you gave him a C, which uh, had a lot of people up in arms. Uh, he didn't play great. I don't know that he did anything. You know, I thought he played better in the first game than he did the second game. Unfortunately for Barkley, he didn't do anything to separate himself. So break down the race for number three, which maybe is the most high-profile number three quarterback spot <laughs> in the history of the NFL. It's the only reason to watch the second half in those first two games, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> but you have to. I mean, Barkley, think about this. Matt Barkley was projected to be the number one overall pick if he came out as a junior. He did not, and he slipped. Tim Tebow was a first round pick. Sanchez a first round pick, and you got Bradford the number one overall pick. You got four guys who were legitimately, you know, thought to be first round picks at some point, all battling for time here. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, it's funny it's how Tebow is so controversial, even in Grayson's grades, right? I mean. My uncle was, was giving me a little bit of a problem. He thought I should have given him a better grade. And I'm thinking he didn't complete, complete enough passes. 
I mean, the biggest criticism I have of Tim Tebow, we'll start with him. He's holding the ball too long. Now, granted, he's playing with a bunch of guys who aren't going to be on this roster when the 53-man roster is formed. So you have to keep that in mind. But he's holding on to the ball too long. He's um, also, you know, I thought that the touchdown, he was too quick to try to go run for the touchdown that had to be reviewed and when it eventually overturned. He had an open receiver in the end zone. I want to see him make that throw. I want his legs to be a threat, to be able to go do something if it's there, but not to force it. Uh, and and that's what he did. And what I give him a lot of credit for is 26-yard run. You saw once he got that run, everything became so much easier for um, most certain run than uh, Benang guy to run. Their holes were a lot bigger. The defense had to respect him, Tebow's ability to get out there and move downfield. And that's what I'd like to see him do. Occasionally use his legs when it's there to go downfield and get some first downs, but he's got to be able to do some stuff with his arm where he's of no use uh, beyond maybe a two-point conversion specialist. As for Matt Barkley, the fact that Barkley went in first says a lot to me about what Chip Kelly's trying to do. He's clearly now shopping Barkley to try to get somebody to bite. He's trying to illustrate to the other teams, you're going to have to offer us a trade because we're going to keep him as our number three guy. It's two games in a row, I put him in third. If you want him, you got to offer us something. And uh, I don't know that anybody's going to ultimately bite on that. There's some teams that I think would like Matt Barkley because their injuries are adding up and, and they certainly don't have a lot in there. A locker room that, that they feel is much better than that. So Matt Barkley, to me, uh, I still don't know that he makes this team, but I think Chip Kelly's trying to show the league that he that he deserves a, a solid look and perhaps a trade. His throws were awful. His stats were awful. Uh, I thought he had a really good first game, but to me that's about the ceiling for Matt Barkley. I didn't expect him to really come out and do that the second week either. Now we'll see what happens in week three against Green Bay. Yeah, that'll be something to watch. But typically that's the the game where the backup quarterbacks get the least amount of time. So we'll see who gets more right. time. Tebow, uh, who you gave a C. Barkley, who you gave a D in that game. Uh, I want to ask you a quick, couple quickies real fast. Kenyon Barner, on this 53 or outside looking in? How do you cut that guy? Uh, barring an injury like last year, how do you cut that guy? He's broken two special teams plays. He's going to allow Darren Sproles to be a little more fresher, maybe not become your special teams guy full time and be able to be used more in the offense, which we saw a little bit of with the first team. Um, I, I really like that use for Sproles better. I think Barner has shown the ability to hit a hole. What I like is when that punt that he returned on that kick, I said, oh, this is very returnable, as it was in the air. And sure enough, he took off with it, hit the hole, and was gone. Barner, to me, does he gets the ball and he moves. He doesn't wait to get the ball look down as some special teams return guys will do and try to survey the field before he goes somewhere. He knows where he's going with it while the ball is still in the air. That's a skill that's really tough to teach and I think if you got a guy that has it and he's young enough and he can go do that then I think you've got to keep him on this team and he, at right now to me, he's the fourth running back that somebody else is going to have to beat and I don't see any of the other guys right now doing that. Yeah, and I want to, you know, uh, later on in the week, Scott, we'll talk about who's the odd man out somewhere else. I mean, how many receivers, who's the odd man out there? Do they keep a third tight end? Do they go light on some spot on defense? I think if you keep Barner, you're, you're going light someplace else. And if you keep a third quarterback, that's another decision. You know, maybe Tebow and Barkley both don't make the team. We'll see how it all shakes out. Saturday night, the Eagles take on the Green Bay Packers. Coverage continues this week on 97.3 and, of course, always at 97.3 ESPN.com. Scott Grayson's Grayson's grades are posted. See the rest of them at 97.3 ESPN.com. Thanks, Scott. All right. Thanks a lot, Mike.